Hi everyone, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I'm excited to share a recording that I had from my Patreon members one year ago. This one is on psychrometrics and the effects of airflow. Of course, in part one this week, we're going to talk about reading the chart and psychrometric processes. Without further ado, here's the training. Let's talk about uh, reading the chart. All right. So uh, as you can see here, I have a few lines uh, on the right hand side on a psychrometric chart. But before I get into each one going down on the left hand side, I want to point out there's a small black circle right here at 80 degrees and 50% relative humidity. That is what is considered standard air. So that is always a reference point, and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna use that reference point later when we talk about room sensible heat ratios. So uh, that standard air, of course, we don't design with standard air. We design, as an example, an air conditioning at 75 degrees dry bulb and 50% relative humidity, which equals 63 wet bulb. Um, so I'm gonna walk through here. You can see this red line at the bottom. Uh, the red line shows dry bulb going straight up and that's 75 degrees dry bulb and the dry bulb temperatures in this chart is in blue so the numbers on the bottom represent dry bulb i take my ruler if i have this printed off and i draw a vertical line up at 75 in this example all right then if i know my wet bulb temperature and I, if you guys are in service you probably know dry bulb and wet bulb are the probably the two easiest pieces to get off of anything with properties of air you can measure that very easily these days with digital psychrometers um, i personally used to used to use the old uh, cotton sock wet it with a uh, type k thermocouple put it in the return and watch that water evaporate it was a nightmare. By the time it actually evaporated to get me a wet bulb, the dry bulb temperature already changed. So now we have fast, accurate tools. And as long as you have two pieces of information off the left-hand side here, you can plot and know everything else that's going on with the air off of the psychrometric chart. So in this example, I'm gonna use our design temperature, 75 dry bulb and 50% relative humidity. And when I plot that point here, Right here on this 50% relative humidity, remember relative humidity are these curved lines that go in, um, in this example, from the bottom left to the top right, and it's in pink or red. So you can see here, I blocked off the 50% line, so you can follow that line and see where it intersects our dry bulb at 75 degrees. So we can draw that point, and if we draw a perpendicular line up, you can see it's actually gonna intersect with 63 wet bulb right here. So the green numbers on this chart are our wet bulb temperatures, okay? Also, if you continue on, I'm not gonna get too much into this, but you can find out how many BTUs per pound of air this is. In this example, design temperature is 75 dry bulb, 63 wet bulb, 50% relative humidity, actually gives us 28.8 BTUs per pound of air. That's the enthalpy line, these blue lines, uh, the bars on the back here on the left hand side so you can see enthalpies enthalpy is btus per pound all right so that's a great reference wet bulb and dry bulb i'm sorry wet bulb and enthalpy are directly related though you don't need a psychrometric chart they actually have a great chart that's made by ashray that you can do uh the wet bulbs on the on the left hand side right um, and then across the top is going to be tenths of a degree and you can actually change wet bulb to enthalpy very easily all right so the amount of heat content in the air directly relates to wet bulb all right um, so if i was to drop draw a uh, horizontal line across on this point now that i have my design temperatures you can see where it intersects the wet bulb line and the green line for wet bulb degrees right that is going to be the dew point of the air right so if anything is below the dew point of the air in that space you'll start to get condensation on that that's a really important number to know okay this example it's right around 55 degrees just below 55 and also on the right hand side you can see the grains per pound of air um, that's how much moisture so 64 grains per pound so you can see you can get all of the properties of air if you know just two points and the easiest to know is dry bulb and wet bulb or on the design side, maybe dry bulb and relative humidity. Really, really important, all right? So that's how to read the chart. Now I'm gonna talk about what the chart can do for you, okay? 
So first off, if we have a horizontal line, all right, we're gonna be changing sensible temperature. And you can see on the bottom here, uh, we can start out at let's say 60 degree dry bulb in the return of a furnace, all right? And if I was to not add any humidity or not remove any humidity, a horizontal line will show sensible temperature being added to the space if we're gonna to move to the right. So if I stick my probe then in the supply of the furnace and it's 100 degrees coming out, you can see that would move horizontally. We're not adding any humidity, we're just changing sensible temperature, okay? Now, if we're gonna add humidity but not change temperature, that would be a vertical line. And you can see here, if my design temperature was 75 dry bulb, uh, 63 wet bulb, if I was to go vertical here, I would have the same sensible temperature, the same dry bulb temperature, but I would be adding humidity to the space and my wet bulb would be going up, right? And the highest I could go is equal to the dry bulb, right? So if you had a glass, you, I like to think of uh, the dry bulb temperature like a glass and how much water in the glass would be the relative humidity. And the wet bulb would be directly related to that, right? And I can only equal the dry bulb. Anything past that, moisture's coming out of the air, right? At 100% relative humidity, and the dry bulb is equal to the wet bulb. So that's the highest that can go. And you can see here that's represented on this vertical line. 75 here equals 75 if you go vertically all the way up, all right? Um, now, the little tougher ones is when we're going um, at an angle. So let's say we add heat and humidity. We have a furnace, right? And we're gonna uh, turn the humidifier on when we start to heat the air, because we don't wanna dry it out, okay? If we were gonna do that, if we we're gonna add heat and humidity, we would be going up and to the right, okay? So you can see here, um, sensible temperature goes up, and our humidity starts to rise. So this, this kind of follows the same line, but you can see as we add humidity, it's gonna go up and to the right for the second point, right? Of course, if we're heating and dehumidifying, let's say we don't turn the humidifier on, as we heat that air in that furnace, we scorch the air, the relative humidity, the moisture comes out of the air, it goes out in the exhaust, right? So uh, you can see here, we're gonna start to use that air and moisture and combustion, we're gonna, we're gonna start losing moisture, and even though we're gonna heat the air, the relative humidity starts to come down. And that's because, if you guys can think of it this way, if I had that glass, and I'm gonna make the glass bigger, but we're not gonna put any more water in the glass, the relative humidity goes down, right? Relative to how much water could be in the glass. So that's the easiest way I like to think about it. Now, of course, cooling the air is gonna be on the left side of this sensible temperature line at 75 degrees. If I'm going to run an air conditioner, right, but it's way oversized and it's short cycling, and I keep turning the temperature down to try to feel comfortable, we actually might be changing the glass size so much that we can't remove the moisture at the same rate that we're changing the temperature. So in that instance, the relative humidity actually could go up in the space as we start to change the temperature down to the left, right? So as we start cooling, if the relative humidity goes up, the second temperature we take in the supply actually will be above to the left, right? Up to the left. Um, so that would be cooling, but adding humidity. What we ideally want in air conditioning, of course, is cooling and dehumidifying. That would be down and to the left when we plot that separate point, right? So we started with, let's say, 75 degrees or 80 degrees um, dry bulb and 60 or 65 degree, I'm sorry, 60 or 65 wet bulb, which would be obviously a higher humidity, right? Let's say 55% relative humidity and we go down into the left closer to design, we would remove humidity and cool the air. That's what we wanna do, right? And that's how we'd be verifying it. Of course, the enthalpy would be going down in that instance. We'd be removing BTUs per pound of air. So those are the processes that we actually can measure in a heat pump, an air conditioner, a furnace, right? And understand what's happening to the air. Um, that way we know, uh, do we need to add humidity so you feel more comfortable, right? Um, do we need to remove more humidity so you feel more comfortable? So uh, it helps to know and understand the properties of air when you walk into these situations to find out, geez, let's start looking at if the system's oversized, right? Or let's start looking at if the air is moving too fast. So what did you think? Did you like the class on psychrometrics? If you do, you can get videos like this one year in advance by heading over to my Patreon page, the link's below. 
Of course, if you do like these and you're willing to wait and you want it for free, just subscribe to my channel and of course, turn on notifications so you don't miss any. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.